I also need to mention, was I the only one who noticed a little political subtext in this movie? You have a white villain with the Boys of America named Donald. Who's going after a minority of mutants across a desert border that resembles more like a Mexican border? Maybe it's just coincidence, but it's so good to be coincidence. Pasito tum tum, pasito tum tum, pasito tum tum, pasito tum tum. Hello, this is CF Wendy. Welcome to a classic modern reviews. And welcome to a new edition of this program called What Is Its Place? You know those moments where there's a movie where it breaks the fourth wall by watching a movie that exists? Well, in this edition, I'll be focusing on those moments to find if there's any purpose for these movies to make a cameo reference, and what better way to introduce this concept with last year's critical hit, Logan. For this video, I'll be focused to see if there's any importance to this scene and answer the question, what is Shane's place in Logan? Does it establish a theme? Does it convey a message? Well, let's find out what message is being sent to who. What's the point for pop culture references, whether if it's movies, music, or books? Mainly, they can be used for three purposes. One, it gives it a homage to the project that inspired it. Two, it gives us the tone and theme of its world, and the closer it is to our reality, the more relatable it is. And three, it establishes a message that the characters will learn later on. Like realizing that Popeye can inspire you from saving your overdose friend! <laughs> Shane in this movie serves in all three areas. It's a homage to the westerns, it sets up its down-to-earth tone and theme, and brings forth a message to one of the characters, that being Laura or also known as X-23. Now, what do we know about her? She was raised by mad scientists to be only one thing, a killer. She was robbed from her parents, her childhood, her innocence, until she meets up with Charles and Logan. Then there's a moment where she relaxes with Charles to see a very famous picture. This is a very famous picture, Laura. It's almost 100 years old. Aside from this being her first experience of the outside world, this is also her first lesson she receives by a movie that sums up her whole life. All she's ever known is violence. The only solution to a problem she's ever been taught to face is cutting people's heads off. The scenes that leave an impression on her are the gun shootings and funerals, reflecting how her whole life has been about violence and death. But then we also spend a chunk of time with Shane's speech in the end. Joey, there's no living for the killing. There's no going back from one. Right and wrong, it's a brand. A brand sticks. Now to know where he's coming from, I should also mention something about his backstory. Shane in the film is a gunslinger who's not proud of his bloodshedding past, but he tries to move on from it, so instead he dedicates his time to help other people and be a good role model for kids. But once again, bad luck leads him to return to those violent roots in order to protect those he cares the most from the villains. In the end, he decides to depart from his friends because he accepts what he is, a killer. And he'll just put him into more danger if he stays. There's no going back from him. Right and wrong is a brand. A brand sticks. This is an impactful moment for Laura's worldview because it's the first time she ever hears someone oppose her purpose of living. So much that these words from Shane resonate with her during Logan's funeral. Joey, there's no living with, with the killing. There's no living with the killing. There's no going back from him. There's no going back. Right or wrong, it's a brand. Right or wrong, it's a brand. A brand sticks. A brand that sticks. Killing, whether for sport or survival, will hunt someone regardless. It's a choice that Logan pays for in the movie for all the years of bloodshed, and this will be a burden to Laura if she lets it consume her. Now, what we don't see her experience in the movie is the relationship with the hero and the kid. Their bond grows to that of a father and son relationship. Shane is a guide and a teacher to the kid, which he admires and admits he loves as a father. The closest to a family figure Laura ever has in the film is a mother, a grandfather, but not of a father. 
She wants to copy that same bond with Logan like in Shane, but soon figures out that reality is not like in the movies. I don't know what Charles put in your head, but I am not whatever it is you think I am, okay? But going back again to Shane's speech, the only advice Logan can offer her as a father in his last moments is not to be like him. You don't be what they made you. I also find interesting the similarities between Laura and Joy. They both witness the adults in their wildest moments, but while one adores the adult figure, the other one has a hard time relating to him. But they differ in their crave for blood. While Laura wants to leave her violent life behind for a normal childhood, which will never happen, Joy wants to imitate the shootings and the killings because he thinks it looks awesome. It's a contrast of two different worlds, where killing in the western was glamorized and in the world of Logan is traumatizing. But hey, does Shane also relate to Logan? Well, before we answer that, let me refresh your memory about this character. For almost 20 years, Hugh Jackman has been the longest and most devoted actor to play any superhero role, from his puberty hair days to fully embody the Wolverine. Now for me personally, the Wolverine was… okay. He looked awesome with the claws, but I didn't find his backstory as interesting. What, he doesn't remember that a mad scientist made his wooden claws into metal? Deep. Besides, he just seemed too powerful and too unbeatable to see any deep layers in him. The way he's written in Logan is a drastic change from his earlier roles. In here, he's not all powerful. He's old and washed up, he doesn't heal like he used to, his claws don't work like they used to, he can't fight anymore like in his prime, he lost all the X-Men and all hope for the now extinct mutant race, and is left with the burden to take care of a mentally ill Charles, who's now a shallow form of the once dignified mentor. You're waiting for me to die. You may find some similarities between Logan and Shane, how they're individuals who try to prove they're still worth something. Shane tries to prove that he's still got what it takes to be a man, Logan tries to prove that he's still got it. But when people compare Shane to Logan, it goes deeper from an individual story to a whole genre comparison. Westerns were the pop culture films of their time, just like superheroes are now coming up every single year. They were the classic American heroes of the 40s and 50s, just like the comic book heroes are now. But as the western genre got old and eventually died out, has left many reviewers like Nerd Writer, The Closer Look wonder, are we getting tired of the superhero genre? Just like Logan in the movie, are superheroes getting too old and it's only a matter of time that they die out? If there's another western that Logan gets often compared, it's Unforgiven. This came by the time westerns were long gone, and it had the same premise of an old gunslinger that tries to prove that he still got it. Even Steven Spielberg has gone up to compare these genres to warn that the superhero time will be up. So are superheroes running out of ideas? Have we just accepted the absurdity of what comic books are in order to last longer? The moment where they break the fourth wall by showing an X-Men comic in an X-Men movie is not anything new. We've seen it being done before at the opening of the classic Superman and Captain America. But here, it's different, because the characters fully embrace their existence in the fantasy. They no longer live in their world, they also share our world. And in the real world, there is no place for them. They acknowledge that they're a cheap imitation of the real world, a marketing tool selling out for what's today's modern pop culture, and as we know, pop cultures changed through the decades, as how westerns were once part of the American pop culture. While the signs in the heavens show that we are close to the apocalypse of superheroes, let's be honest, are we really in the last days of superheroes? Maybe some are sick and tired of the hype, but after watching Infinity War, I realized probably they're going to stay a little while longer. Because let's be clear on something, DC proved to us in 2008 that superheroes could not only be good, but great. However, this whole bandwagon hype for comic books started with the MCU and have followed a hot streak ever since. So as long as they keep making fascinating characters, progress the story, and have good plots, we're still gonna pour our money and see their bajillion sequels. 
And noticing how Marvel's schedule is ready for the new decade, they don't seem to stop anytime soon. But I also wonder, when we get to the 2020s, will this genre survive and remain relevant one more decade? Or will this be the time when they turn in their capes and fade away like the westerns? And that's what Shane's place in Logan is. It's not just a warning to the upcoming films of this genre, it also shows that old out of fashion genres can still have what it takes to be good stories and profitable. Genres will decline and eventually die out. But just like the westerns faded, new modern westerns followed after. Just like musicals faded, new musicals followed after. And just like the classic horror monsters faded once in a while, a new boo! Okay, that one is dead. There will be a time when the superhero genre dies out and then new ones come forward. But until then, enjoy these modern gunslingers, walk into the light of the dawn as strong as they've ever been. And those were my thoughts on Shane's plays in Logan. Have you seen them? Did you like them? Did you not like them? Leave your comments on the section to see what you thought about them. And if you like this video, leave a like and subscribe for more content. Well guys, tune in next time because when I get back, I'll be comparing Inherit the Wind and God's Not Dead 2. Oh boy. So for now, that's it for today. <gasps> Ciao. Pasito tum, pasito tum.